Good afternoon, everyone. You have signed on to the Zoom webinar titled For Transfer Students, College Search Finding Fit, presented by University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Thank you for joining us. And so as we wait for people to sign in, I see our numbers climbing. Let me just go over the session description. With over 5,000 colleges in the US, the task of narrowing your choices can seem overwhelming. Where do you even start? Start with this session to help you sift through all your options to find schools that are a good fit for you. So uh, the format that we are using today is Zoom webinar, which means that you can hear me and see me, but um, you, we can't hear you or see you. And so um, notice on your menu bar, there is a question and answer button that you are more than welcome to use throughout the presentation. I'm joined by my colleague um, who will be able to get to that if I don't see it first. And so you won't be interrupting me if you use that. And then if we need to, we will push out information to you via the chat button, um, any helpful um, links or emails that we want you to have. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Vanessa Aya, and I am with the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, or UCCS campus. I've been with the university for quite a while, for about 21 years. When I first started at UCCS, I started as, as an academic advisor, um, but for the last 10 years have worked in admissions with both prospective um, students who are looking to come in as incoming freshmen, and then of course, like you all, um, for those students who are looking to transfer in, whether it be from a community college or um, from another four-year university. And so here's the agenda that we are going to talk about in terms of you, um, you know, and your college search and trying to figure out, you know, where things are at, what you should be looking for. So, of course, first we're going to talk about, um, you know, kind of that self-evaluation um, you know, taking a, an assessment of an inventory of what is important to you, core values. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about um, the college options, um, important to, uh, questions for you to ask um, and look for when you're researching, you know, like I mentioned, the 5,000 colleges in the US, let alone worldwide, if that's an opportunity. Then we're going to talk about kind of that list and marrying those two things together. You know, what's important to you, what you value, what colleges are offering, and then organizing your information, so to speak. And then finally, um, like I said, you know, any question and answer questions that you might have, um, feel free to drop that in during the presentation, um, and I will make, uh, make sure that we get to that. And so first, let's talk a little bit about um, self-evaluation and, um, you know, taking stock of what's important to you. What I appreciate about transfer students is that you all, um, whether you've been at your local community college for a year um, or, you know, two years, you're finishing up in associates or, you know, maybe, you know, here in Colorado Springs, we have a high military population. So some of the students that come to us are coming from a wide variety of different colleges, depending on where they've been stationed. And so I think that you all have an advantage over, um, you know, in, the, in respects over some of our high school seniors who are on this college journey of figuring out what's important to you because you've had that opportunity at your current university or at your previous colleges, you know, whether that be, you know, religion or your culture, or access to family or being, you know, in proximity to your family, you know, kind of thinking about what, um, things you need, not just in the classroom, but the things that you'll need for when you need to decompress from being out, you know, in the classroom, the things that distress you, you know, and maybe for you, it's being outdoors or having access to outdoors or having an avenue to release that creativity, access to innovation and the opportunity for, um, you know, a wide variety of communities that you can find at a college campus. And so, um, of course, you know, that you can take that in if you have not had a chance to, to think about that or time to think about that is via assessments. And, you know, in between my time 
in advising and admissions, um, I actually worked in the Career Center. And so I would urge you whether, you know, wherever you are at your current college or university to check out um, your student services to see if there are free um, personality assessments that you can access to help you figure out what is important to you. However, as you know, there are some free resources online that you can do from the comfort of your home. And I'll offer you a couple and also have the links for you um, a little bit later on in this present presentation. Um, so at career, many career centers, the MBTI, um, the Myers-Briggs is, you know, our, our common kinds of assessments that you'll find um, at many colleges. Um, you know, across the US. 16 personalities is one that we'll talk about just a little bit right now. Um, if you do access one online, you know, again, um, make sure that they're free because a lot of them, the you know, some of these really good ones are free on websites. So 16 personalities is, a, is an example of one that you can access. Here is just uh, some of the information that comes available to you. Um, and you can see that it divides it up and color codes things. Um, so that's one example. Another example, which um, has been really interesting to play with, especially, again, particularly for transfer students, is uh, called Corsava. And what Corsava does is that it categorizes things for you as far as like, what are things that are important to you that are kind of like, you know, whatever college you're going to apply to, you must have these. Then there's another category of like, you know, these would be kind of nice, you know, nice to have or not. And then there are some no go, there's a no go list. Like, uh, there's no way that if this college has this, then I'm going to consider that. And so, you know, again, I want you to be mindful that there is no such thing as one perfect college. The idea of, of having a successful college search is the idea that there are um, multiple college campuses that are potential good fits for you. And so again, Corsava is one um, that is free, that's important, um, but will help you organize your thoughts and um, your information. And so again, using some color codes, um, um, it weighs for you and asks you questions related to what academics are you looking for? Um, you know, what, you know, to what extent is residential life important to you? Um, access to student resources, so on and so forth. So um, really like how it lays that out for you on their website. And just an example here is um, the different categories. So the first one must have, you can see with this particular student, um, they have listed out like, okay, these are the things I have to have in a college. And so this particular student is, um, you know, possibly looking at criminal justice or poli sci and public health when it comes to academics. But then in terms of other things, they are looking at a medium sized school, they want it to be a diverse school, um, you know, and so on and so forth. So these, this is an example for one student who, you know, these are things I got to have at the particular college that I am going to look to apply to. Here's an example of what they put on their would be nice list. And so, um, you know, I love that orange section where they talked a little bit about like, yeah, you know, sororities and fraternities, it's not on my must have, but it would be nice to have that there. Um, this whole concept of big fish in a little pond, um, you know, kind of ties to um, that desire on their must have of a medium college, right? And so, you know, that's a possibility there. Um, community college is on the list there as, you know, might, would be nice to have, obviously as transfer students, you know, that might be more on the must have, like, you know, having transfer agreements in place or, you know, your transfer credits coming over. And then finally, um, some examples of no-goes for this particular student. And so it looks like this student is, is just not interested in being at a rural campus, campus and they are not particularly looking at those um, states and um, so on and so forth. So again, Corsava, a great um, resource that I learned about um, over the summer as I presented with other colleges and universities about finding fit. 
so that's, you know, again, taking assessment of where you are as, at as a student and what's important to you as you're looking for a college. Always good to pause and think about that. Now let's talk about the college side and what there is to offer. So this map here, you can see the little pins um, represent all the colleges and universities just in the, in the US alone. Um, and so if you want, feel free to drop into uh, the Q&A or the chat button. I'd love to hear where you all are from. If um, you all are transferring from a local Colorado community college, or maybe you're looking at, you're coming from California, or maybe you're coming from elsewhere. Um, I'd love to hear that a little bit more. Uh, but you can see that, you know, it is, uh, you know, there's a lot of options as far as colleges are concerned. So what do we do to narrow that down? You're gonna ask yourself some important questions as to, you know, again, what you might be looking for. So, and these are top um, kinds of categories that not just transfer students are looking at, but also our high school stu students who are looking to apply are also pondering. So they're looking at location. And we talked a little bit about, you know, that one student with Corsava um, who took the who took that, you know, they were not interested in a rural campus, but maybe for you, you are looking for, um, you know, a suburban um, environment, or maybe you're looking for a big city, um, you know, that those kinds of opportunities, the size, you know, whether you're looking at medium size for us in our state, you know, we're considered medium size with about 12,000 students, but maybe you're looking for smaller than us, or maybe you're looking for even larger than us. Of course, cost is a factor. And again, transfer students, I feel like you have a leg up on our high school seniors in that you, again, depending on how much time um, you have been at your at your community college or at your current university, you get really good with your money. And so you really have a sense of, um, you know, what you're looking to spend for the final time that you have, you know, if you're look, you know, looking to come to us, for example, to finish up your four year degree. So cost is a huge factor. And I would add to that, not just looking at the cost in terms of tuition and fees, but also the cost of living. And so I see that there are several students on uh, this webinar who are from California. And so, you know, California, many parts of California tends to be on the higher cost of living when we, you know, look at this map, right? But when you start to think about like, okay, well, wherever I go for the next two years, one year, however much you have left to finish a bachelor's degree, you know, maybe you go to some of these other states right around uh, California, that the cost of living will most likely be cheaper than many parts of California. So certainly that is going to play um, into your decision. And finally, this all ties together with your access to opportunities and resources. Um, you know, we talked about that urban environment. So if you're looking for, you know, for something related to business, maybe something related to the stock markets and whatnot, then you might want to be looking at bigger urban centers uh, for that. Or if you're looking for um, access to, um, you know, agriculture or, um, you know, research at higher altitudes, like here in Colorado, you know, then of course you would want to look for appropriate colleges in that location. And then also I would, I would expand that even further in terms of like you all as transfer students have become aware of what gen eds, you know, you've taken, what topics might be under. So like, for example, psychology, right? Psychology, there's a multitude of categories under that, whether you might be interested in social psych or clinical psych psychology or industrial organization. Well, part of your research as you look at different colleges is clicking into those academic departments to see if faculty are specialized in that area that you are looking to specialize within when it comes to a given major. All right, so, you know, all together, ultimately, um, as I mentioned, you're looking for colleges that 
that are right there in the center in terms of three major things. The academic fit, you know, courses that are of interest to you and that are strengths of yours. Um, social fit, we saw that on the course level where that student was like, no, nah, that's okay. I don't need to have sororities and fraternities. But, you know, for another student, you know, that it was important for them to have that. Um, and then of course the financial fit. Is it meeting your budget needs when it comes to, um, you know, the cost of higher education? So how do we marry those? How do we marry um, all of the information and organize all of that information? There is a website, and again, I'll have all the websites at the end of this presentation um, that can help you organize your information. And for transfer students, um, you know, some of you will have top choices, of course. Many of them may very well be in proximity to where you are currently taking classes at a community colleges, but I would urge you, again, um, to make sure that you're getting a good mixture of colleges. And so, you know, we do a three-tier, um, categorization categorization and so for example you know i encourage students to make sure that they have colleges that are in that likely category um, so let's use the example of a transfer student who is maybe at a 3.3 um, college transfer gpa and your local college um, for your college up the street maybe their average transfer profile um, the average transfer student comes in in with a 3.0 transfer GPA. So for this 3.3 transfer GPA student, the local school where the average is 3.0 transfer GPA, that would be a likely, um, that would put you in the likely ca category where that typically means the uh, acceptance rate is 80% or more um, and you are above their admissions profile from last year. Then, the, you know, if you, if you have, if you can, you know, you'll want to include some maybe harder acceptance, you know, schools that their acceptance rate is a little bit lower. So again, using that example of the student who is at a 3.3 college transfer GPA, maybe the school that's an hour away from you or an hour and a half away from you, their average transfer is more like a 3.3, right? So you're right there at that target range. And so you know, maybe you'll probably get in. And then the higher category, of course, is that you are below. And so maybe, you know, there's another school in, in the opposite direction that the average transfer coming in, so you're at a 3.3, the average transfer coming in is more like at a 3.8. And so that is a reach, you know, it's gonna be a reach for a lot of students um, if they have an acceptance rate of less than 50%. But again, an effective college search, you know, if you've, if you've gone through the exercise of understanding what you're, what, who you are, and you've matched it with, with that, what that college has to offer, then you're gonna find schools that are in these uh, three various categories. How do we organize it? Um, of course, um, via a table of some sort. And this particular one is from a website called Scholar Match. And um, you can download it and kind of, you know, uh, finagle it as you see fit. Um, and so, you know, this first bu bucket here, well, that's where you list the name of the school. And here's where you would put down, okay, well, how selective are they? You know, are they gonna be on my target list? Are they more of a likely school or are they more of a reach school? You wanna keep track of deadlines, if they require an essay from you, so on and so forth and a wide variety of other things, including organizing cost information and other pieces that they might need from you. All right, so here are three of the main um, websites that I mentioned, um, 16 Personalities, that was the first one. Corsava is the one that had you organize things by must-haves, uh, would be kind of nice. And then Scholar Match is that, um, that uh, website that will have the table to help you organize your various um, you know, information. So now just so that 
you as transfer students um, can kind of hear um, some buzzwords when it comes to how we describe UCCS in terms of the things that I've described for you. Let me just give you a brief overview of um, students who are looking to transfer in to UCCS. And so this is a shot um, from one of the mild hiking, mountain biking trails right on our campus. Colorado Springs is about an hour south of the capital city of Denver. And you can see that we have wonderful views of Pikes Peak Mountain, which is 14,000 feet above sea level. So in terms of our transfer um, information, it is all found at transfer.uccs.edu. We consider a student a transfer student if they have at least 24 credit hours after they have completed um, high school. And so I know that um, at UC or in California, for my California students who are on this call, many of your California public schools, you're you know you're not you can't transfer to them until you have at least 60 credit hours at your local community college. That is not the case at schools like schools in Colorado like UCCS. Um, oh yeah, I can go back to how you organize what we need to send to colleges. I can do that real quick. Like I said, this is the website. Let me type that up real quick. So that way you can download that chart. And I'll put it in the chat. So yeah, it's quite the extensive uh, list. Um, or columns list. Um, you know, again, I, I don't typically advise, particularly transfer students, to not go over, um, you know, that one to three, one to three, one to three applications in each of these categories. So, really, you know, I would recommend no more than nine. Um, applications as a transfer student, even maybe even, even less than that, because again, you all have gotten very good at verbalizing what is important to you all in terms of your education. All right, so let me go back here. So again, transfer students for us, 24 semester hours is, is all you need to come to us. And in a bit, I'll show you what our GPA looks like. Um, you can always email our transfer team, uh, Mary, who's on this call, she's our transfer coordinator. Um, if you are interested in learning unofficially how your current classes or what you've already completed at your local community college, how they transfer over. Um, we, do use trans we do use transferology. Some col other colleges also use that where you can actually input like, you know, I took this class in spring semester from my California Community College. I took this class or I'm in this class right now for fall semester. And depending on, you know, how many students we've gotten from that particular school, um, you'll be able to see like, oh, okay, that this class that I'm in right now for the fall, it'll transfer in as this particular UCCS requirement. Um, but again, if you don't, if your class number and title, if they don't have an equate, equated UCCS class when you use transferology, then just let us know. Um, email us transfer at uccs.edu and we can, um, you know, again, provide you with an unofficial transfer evaluation. Um, so here's what our what our criteria looks like um, as far as minimum transfer GPAs. Um, and so we have six different colleges. Our biggest college is our College of Letters, Arts and Sciences, where biology, uh, pre-med, chemi or excuse me, communication, psychology, those are very popular programs at our school. They go all the way up to the PH or the doctor level on our campus. We also have a School of Public Affairs, so that's where criminal justice and social work live. And then we also have a college of education. So if you're looking to go on for your teacher certification or go into counseling, that's in education. And so we're looking for just a 2.4 transfer GPA if you're looking at majors in those three colleges. Um, within Bethel College, excuse me, Helen and Arthur E. Johnson, Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences. We have a couple of different programs. Nursing is um, one of our more competitive programs on our campus and we are looking for a minimum 3.0 transfer GPA. Um, we do have other health sciences areas, um, including human physiology and nutrition, athletic training, um, 
sports health and wellness. I know I'm missing a couple, but those programs are not quite not as competitive, still wonderful programs to be a part of 2.5 transfer GPA. Um, the two original programs that we have had at, at Colorado Springs since our since we were founded over 50 years ago um, would be our College of Business as well as our Co College of Engineering and we are looking for at least a 3.0 in that and you can see that there is some particular coursework that is being outlined. Um, Yes, I will send these slides over to you all in a PDF um, come tomorrow. Great question. Um, if by chance at the high school level um, you did do AP um, credits or, or you took an AP test or maybe you took an IB test, if you want to use the raise your hand feature, if you do have uh, AP or IB under your belt, yes, we do. Wonderful. So we have a, a nice helpful chart that shows you what test scores you need for those to come in to us. For the most part, we're looking at at least fours for the AP. Um, some of the harder exams, we do take threes and that will earn you college credit. So we don't look at, you know, AP. AP credits just for admissions as some other colleges do, um, but we actually look at them for potential college credit that helps you check off boxes off of your degree plan. So for example, some of those harder exams that we look for at least to three would be like calculus BC or foreign languages, um, things like that. And then we also will bring in IB credit whether or not you finish the whole IB diploma or if you just took um, certain IB um, higher level exams, we can, um, you know, there's a chart that will detail that as well. If you just go to transfer.uccs.edu and pull down from the menu test scores, you'll be able to see the various charts when it comes to AP and IB. And so, um, you know, as far as transfer students, again, it's a little bit more specific um, information, but wanted to give you all this so that, again, as you are thinking about some of the places that you are looking to transfer to, you know, this is just an example of what we are looking for um, at UCCS. We tend to be, and we are probably more, I would say, in that 80% acceptance rate when it comes to transferring to UCCS compared to other schools. Again, I think of my, my California friends that I work with, um, some California schools, the um, acceptance rate is lower than us. So just to give you an idea of where our tuition and fees um, are laying, our Colorado residents, of course, they pay a little bit cheaper um, and these are yearly rates. Um, transfer students are not required to live on campus with us, but know that it is an option. We do have upper, uh, upper class um, apartments starting sophomore on, on up. And so the reason why this price varies is it depends on what type of apartment or suite you choose over in our apartments and then you'll see the total cost here by the way this does include um, your unlimited meals and so this is not just room and uh, it's not just your room or suite it also includes meals my friends from California, you typically are under our Western Undergraduate Exchange Program, so a little bit more. And then my friends who are not in the Western states, um, for example, my students from Texas, from the East Coast, so on and so forth, um, then you pay the highest. There are uh, transfer scholarships available. And um, so here's WUI. Um, Peak Award is typically for those out-of-state students who are not in WUI, and that has an annual award as well. We are still working on finalizing amounts and requirements um, for this year, so that will be on our website soon. And then we do have some examples of other scholarships. So these two up here, the Peak Award and the WUI, we do automatically for both freshmen and transfer students. These two on the bottom, the Chancellor's and the Presidential, are examples of scholarships that you would have to apply for after you've been accepted to UCCS. All right, I know I got 
a lot of information thrown out to you all. My apologies, but wanted to try and be mindful of your time. Mary, what did I miss? Um, I saw you answered a bunch of questions on the back end, so thank you for that. Yeah, we have um, no open questions at the moment, so we can maybe give another minute for those to come in. Absolutely. Mary, do you have any um, final tips for our transfer students as they are potentially looking to transfer, you know, as early as spring? Our, our admissions, we not only accept transfer students um, for fall, traditional fall semester, we do see a lot of students for traditional fall start in August, but we, we do offer transfer students um, admission for spring, which for us starts in January, as well as in our optional summer semester, which starts in June. Any tips, Mary? I would just say um, the more you can communicate, the better. So, I mean, at any given time, I'm talking with a transfer student that may be planning to start in two months or in two years. And so um, I think just noting that the, our office definitely has support for those students in that transition um, to UCCS, or if you're looking at other schools, there's the same types of offices and similar types of people that are available to help you. So um, as early as you can start communicating and start that process, the better. Um, and then, yeah, just knowing that we're here to support you if you email us at transfer at uccs.edu. Yes, I'm so glad you said that, Mary. Um, it is a lot of work. I recognize that transfer students because perhaps like I think again of my, my students that I often work with from California, you all are very well um, been, you have been working with your transfer centers as you should should be um, with the various transfer agree agreements, whether it's an articulation, whether it's a, you know, here in Colorado, we call them best choices.